My name is Mark Metcalf, and I've just been part of the annual Ellen Strange commemoration walk and the laying of flowers at the spot where she was murdered by her husband in 1761. For the last decade or so, campaigners against domestic violence have been holding an event here to not only remember Ellen, but to also remember all of the previous year's domestic violence victims. This site is believed to be the only site in the world to commemorate a domestic violence victim. The stones which have been placed on this cairn have been placed by local people for over 200 years. The names of all of those people that were killed in this last year were read out by the 30 people who made the walk up onto Holcomb Moor, a round trip of about three miles. It is an emotional moment, but also uplifting, because some of the people who come on the commemoration are themselves survivors of domestic violence. So hope and a remembrance, and I think today was very good. Violence against women and girls is it's a global, could we even call it a pandemic? I was a victim, I don't really like that word victim. But I'm a survivor, survivor of domestic abuse, 25 years lived experience of domestic abuse. And I fled Bolton in 2018 and started my new life in St. Helens. So what I do with my lived experience, I became the first domestic abuse prevention officer for St. Helens Council. Today I'm an international domestic abuse trainer and I try and make a change, but not just for victims. I want to end the cycle of abuse because a lot of perpetrators, not just because they're entitled, because society gives them permission to behave violently towards women and girls, but also give them an opportunity to change themselves. And some stuff, it is generational, it's passed down. It's watching your parents behave a certain way and it is passed down. So again, for me, it's bystander awareness in schools. It's empowering my neighbors to know how to act. It's really important that we're here because Remembrance is something that unites us all and it's startling to think that when we stood here last year many of the women you are going to remember today were still alive. Domestic abuse legislation is in place now in 2021 the Domestic Abuse Act but there needs to be powers of enforcement. There needs to be more funding and provision for the police and probation there needs to be adequate facilities for survivors and appropriate housing that actually meets statutory duties. And there's a lack of support for organisations like mine, Endeavour, who have seen support needs more than double since the pandemic. And we have to change greater community awareness, early intervention and school education, yes, but also change at the top, the politicians, the judiciary, the monarchy, all of whom have featured in popular press with regards to sexual misdemeanours in the last year. The change should start with recognising misogyny that pervades society. Half of British women are sexually harassed at work or in their place of study, and women are 27 more times likely to face online abuse. 62% of women who are killed by men are killed by a current or a former partner. And more than 40% of these were, had already left or were taking steps to leave. But we also need to remember the three women each week who take their own lives for reasons of domestic abuse. I want to single out Kelly Sutton, a 30-year-old mum of three who took her own life in August 2017. And after years of campaigning for a new inquest on the 6th of July this year, the inquest came out with a verdict of unlawful killing and it's the UK's first causal link between domestic abuse and control she experienced from her partner and her death. So today we remember them all, each a sister or a mother or a grandmother, all a daughter and a friend. We wish to never lose sight of these women and to honour their lives. So I'm going to lay the first stone today in memory of Kelly Sutton, mother of three, 30 year old from Welling Garden City.
Katie Kenyon, 33. Diana Gabrielle, 33. Aisha Hassan, 34. Ramona Stoyer, 35. Jennifer Andrews, 35. Angie Sock, 35. <clears throat> and her children, Jeeva, 6 and Jambi, 4. There's uh, a country and western song by Charlie Rich from the 1970s. It's full of love. It has the words, nobody knows what goes on behind closed doors. And that's what we have to acknowledge today. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors. It affects so many people as we've just seen. Almighty God, there are so many people who live in darkness as a result of abusive relationships. I'd like to thank Unite the Union and Unison, who have been two trade unions that have continually supported this. Uh, I'd like to specifically call out one individual. We've got Andrea Egan here, who was the outgoing president of uh, Unison and who was part of her position use that as one of the charities that raised substantial amount of money for Endeavour. So I'd like to thank Andrea for that. She's been a stalwart of this campaign. I'd like to thank Bolton Trades Council who, who have supported and this, this event from day one. I need to mention a gentleman, the cat, the quiet guy, uh, Metcalf, who was the man who told me this story. I was completely unaware without Mark, this event would never have got any ground, nobody knew about it. And with Mark's help and with my region of Unite, we managed to raise funds that reprinted a book written by John Simpson. Endeavour came on board with us. They've taken it to a new level and have um, moved it forward, which is absolutely fantastic. Most of all, I need to thank each and every one of you for coming along here today. You raise Ellen's voice again. It echoes down through those centuries by us coming out here today. Hopefully, one day we won't need to come here. So, thanks once again.